Hello and welcome to this my video on sequences and recurrence relations for the Year 12 General Maths course. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. Thanks very much for joining me. Uh, hopefully the video is going to be helpful and sensible and useful and all those type of things. But before I get into it, can you do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel? Just click that little button and subscribe and it just shows me that people are actually watching this content and finding it useful. That small click from you means a massive amount to me. I'm also strangely on TikTok. I know I'm very old for TikTok um, and other social media and hopefully I can sort of interact with you there. Now what are we going to do today? This is a brand new module of work or brand new course or section and so by the end of this I want to generate a sequence of terms recursively, generate a sequence of numbers from a worded description using a calculator, uh, generate a sequence from a recurrence relation. Recurrence relation is really important, massive for this whole course generate a sequence of numbers using a calculator and be able to number and name terms in the sequence. Now a lot of this builds on our year 11 general math stuff. If you've done Year 11 General Maths, you will already know much of this. And so it might seem relatively simple, but the notation side of sequences and recurrence relations is actually really, really important. So as I say, if you've got your Year 11 summary book, have it, use it, sort of adapt it for your Year 12 one, um, but it's going to get a little bit more complicated as we move on. Now, I tend not to do this, but I'm actually going to fast forward, and I'm going to tell you that pretty much everything I'm about to do has everything to do with that one thing there. So V0 equals P. Now V0 stands for our start term. So when we start looking at our notation, anything with a subscript zero, that little zero below means our first term. P can be P, it can be A, it can be any letter. But generally it's our start amount, our principal, our opening number, something along those lines. Hopefully by the end of this video and this course, you will get used to the idea that when you see this V with a subscript of N plus one, it means our next term. So to get to our next term, u, as in equals, take this value of r. Now that value of r will change. For most of what I'm going to do for the moment, it's going to be a value of 1. So take the current term. So v of m means current term, and either add on a number or take off a number. Now this plus minus sign here basically allows me to write two equations in one. Right. So sometimes this will be a plus when things are getting bigger, and sometimes it'll be a minus when things are getting smaller. Right. Now, other things that are really important, uh, and I'll explain more as we get through, is that growth can be linear or geometric. We can grow in a straight line, or we can grow, grow by using a curve. So that curve there is called geometric growth. Now when r is 1, the growth will always be linear. So when this value here is 1, it'll always be linear. When there is no value of d, so long as this value of d doesn't exist, then so long as we have a value of r that is greater than 1, it will grow geometrically, and when our R value is between 0 and 1, it will shrink geometrically. But again, you cannot have this plus or minus D. Now, again, everything I'm about to do is going to come and have everything to do with that formula there, just in some different formats. What is a sequence? Well, let's say, what is a list of numbers? In that situation, I've got a list of numbers here. I have completely randomly come up with them. It's random. Is it a sequence? Probably not, but it's certainly a random list of numbers. Uh, is there any order to them? Nah. Can I guess the next number by following some sort of a rule or a pattern? Nah. But if we look here, this here is a sequence. It starts at a particular number and then we can see that to get to each number there is something consistent that we are doing. In that situation, what are we doing? We're adding 3. So to go from term to term to term, you say, hold on a moment, what's a term? Each number is called a term. And each of those terms has a position, right? Like when you're in the dinner queue, all right, waiting for something. Now, recursion deals with the way of going from one term to the next. So long as I know a start number and I know a worded rule, all right, a recurrence rule, then I should be able to get to every single number that follows. So in this situation, if the, the sequence said uh, start at four and add three, well, I'm going to add 3 to give me 7. I've now got 7. I'm going to add 3 to give me 10. Add 3, give me 13. Add 3, give me 16. And so we go forward, right? Now, those three dots there, whenever you see them, means the, uh, the sequence goes to infinity and beyond. God, I love Buzz Lovett. Yeah. Okay. So, again, if I was going to write this in words, then I'd be writing something along the lines of add 3 to each term. I'd probably say we start with 4 and add three to each time. Now, a lot of people turn around and say, well, why did you start at four? Actually, I could start at any number I like. 
yeah, this sequence, although it starts at four, could also go backwards to one, negative two, and so it goes on, all right? That is still a sequence that I could have. I just arbitrarily chose the number four. They'll generally give you a start number and a worded term or worded sequence um, or rule to get you. So here's an example. Write down the first five terms of a sequence. Believe it or not, the number of people who don't read that terrifies me. VCAR will knock you marks off if you do not do the right number of terms, right? If it says five terms, do five terms. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to do five lines, one, two, three, four, five, uh, just so I can make sure that when I fill them in, I'm not going to mess it up. Starting value of six, so my first number is six, and the rule is add four to the previous number. So 10, 14, 18 and 22. Now you're going to turn around and say this is trivial. Yep, it might be trivial, but the number of people who actually get this wrong because they don't do the right number of terms, or in fact just mess up adding four, gets quite scary really. What about another one? I'll write down the first five terms again. So let's write down my first five terms. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, what does it say? Starting with five, and the rule is double the number and subtract three. All right, so double it times by two, subtract three. So times by two is 10, subtract three is seven. Double it is 14, subtract three is 11. 22, subtract three gives me 19. Double it, 38, subtract three gives me 35. Now again, whew, that seems a little uh, confusing to do in our head. Is there an easier way of doing it? Well, of course we can do it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna use the TI Inspire. Sorry guys, if you're using ClassPad, your functionality is pretty similar. So I tend to open up the screen. Now the most important button of a calculator is the ANS button, because it's the answer button, and it allows us to store things in a memory. So in this situation, if I have a starting value of five, I'm gonna do five and hit enter. Now when I do my answer key, when I go control and answer and hit enter, it comes back with five. It has stored that value. So that's now my current term. Well, how do I want to get to my next term? Well, I want to take my answer, I want to double it times by two, and then I want to subtract three. Now when I hit enter, oh, there we go. So it's got my five, and then it's got seven. Now you don't have to type it all again, because actually if I just hit enter again, it does the hard work for me. It knows, because you've put the ANS in there somewhere, that it wants you to, com that you want the calculator to keep repeating that. So hit enter again, it gives me 19. Hit enter again, gives me 35. Do I go any further? Uh, nope, because again, it wants the first five terms. Now, using your CAS to do that is going to save you hours and hours and hours of time. Now, a recurrence relation has a very specific format. The letters can change, and if you do the wrong letters in an exam, because they'll give you the letters, uh, sadly, you're going to lose marks, right? That's just one of those things that the examiners will try and do to trick you, because math, sadly, is a big fat trick. But our recurrence relation always starts with V0 equals and a start number. Remember, I've told you they will always give a start number. They will have V of M plus 1 equals V of M, and for linear, plus or minus some sort of a number. Now, this comma is important, as is a space between them. So, this one here, V0 equals 10, V of M plus 1 equals V of M plus 5. What does that mean? Well, my start number is 10. To get to my next term, take my current term and add 5. Oh, okay. So, in which case, that would give me a sequence of 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so it goes on. All right? They call me my start number and how to get to my next numbers. What about the next one? Well, V0 equals minus three. So my start number is minus three. To get to my next term, take my current term and subtract six. Oh, okay. So minus three, minus nine, minus 15, minus 21. There's my sequence. What about this one? Now, this is where life gets a bit interesting. This wouldn't be linear because we've suddenly got a different number in front of my VN. If you remember, the numbers in front of that VN there, although it doesn't look like there's a number, it's a number one. And when it's a number one, it will grow linearly. When there's a number in front of the VN, it's actually gonna grow in some sort of curved shape. And I'm not gonna say geometrically here, because that plus one will throw things. But again, I've got a starting number of 17. To get to my next term, take my previous term, times it by two, add one. Here, start with 0 0.5. To get to my next term, take my current term, 
multiply by 0.8 and minus 4. Okay, so here's an example of recurrence relationship. Write down the first five terms. Again, I don't want to mess up. One, two, three, four, five. Here are my first five terms. Start with 29 because V0 is 29. What do I have to do? I take my current term and subtract 4. So subtract 4 is going to give me 25, 21, 17, and 13. And again, I could do this on my calculator if I wanted to, just to check. So I'm going to do 29. Then I'm going to say answer minus 4. And again, if you notice with the CAS, I'm doing it. V0, I'm putting in my 29, I'm hitting enter. Then I'm doing my equation, Vn, which I'm just going to replace the word answer minus 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And there we go. I've got my sequence. Luckily, I can take away 4 in my head. Another one, I'll write down the first five terms of this sequence. Oh, that's getting a bit more complicated. One, two, three, four, five. Let's use my CAS up and do it my calculator. So, and it says use your calculator, 300. There we go. So I know my first sequence has got to be, and my first number is 300. What is my thing then? So I now, it's got 0 0.5 VM. So where I see the 0 0.5 VM minus nine, I'm just going to replace that VN with ANS on my calculator. So 0 0.5, I've got to remember that's got to be times my answer minus nine. So one gives me my next value, which is 141, 61.5, 21.75, 1 1.875. Now, hopefully you're screaming at me by now to go, you're not doing the question exactly. And that is a huge trick. Your brain gets so used to doing what it thinks it wants to do. I didn't actually read the question. It actually says, use your calculator to generate the sequence. Okay, I've done that and determine how many terms at the start of the sequence are positive. Ah, so actually let's do another enter on this one there. And as it turns out, my next term there is going to be zero uh, minus 8.0625. So how many of my terms are actually positive? One, two, three, four, five. So the answer to that one would actually be five terms, right? It didn't hurt to write out the sequence, but I needed to make sure I read the question. Consider the recurrence relation shown. State the values of V1, V4, and V5. That's okay. So now, if you remember, we got V0 is equal to 3. How do we get to V1? What is V1? Well, each term has a number. So if I've got the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, that would be V0, V1, V2, V3, and V4, for example. So we now know that really that V1 is the next number in the sequence. How do we get there? Take the current number and add six, all right? So that's going to be nine. V2, I'm gonna add six, is gonna be 15. 21. 27, how much do I need to go? V5 is gonna give me add six of 33. So let me just check, add six, add six, add six, add six. Marvelous, so state the values of V1. In that situation, it's gonna be nine. V4, gonna be 27. He says, let's do that properly. And V5 is going to be 33. Ka-ching. Just same stuff, asking different ways. Now, VCAR questions. I'm going to go through VCAR questions just so that you have an idea of how they can structure the questions and really just try and trick you. Because maths is not about regurgitation. That's only going to get you so far in a further maths exam or a general maths exam. You've got to be able to actually understand the work. So here we have a recurrence relation, but they're trying to trick you. They've written it in a different way. They've swapped. They've said to get to the next number, you do two minus the current number. All right, so it's two minus the current number. They give me my first term. So in this situation, I know that R0 is going to be two. What's R1 going to be? Well, to get to my next term, I do two minus my current term. So two minus two is going to give me zero. To get to R2, what have I got? Well, to get to my next term, I do two minus my current term. Well, my current term is zero. So in which case it's going to be two again. Now let's read the question. The value of R2 is, it's two. So in that situation, it's D. By just being able to read the recurrence relation and doing it the right way, I'm going to get the right answer. Sadly, a number of people got that question wrong. I'm not going to show you how to do this question, but it's also interesting to show that as we move through the course, we're going to start dealing with finance with this stuff. So balance of a loan. Now a loan, you go to a bank, you get money, they're going to start charging you interest. So in this situation here, I've taken out 
$400,000. I've now got a multiplier. I've got a value in front of my VN. Well, in that situation, for money, it's interest, right? They're charging me interest. And I've got this minus 2024. And again, when you have a loan, you have to make a repayment. So understanding that these are also used in the finance part of the course is gonna save you a lot of pain and hurt if you don't understand. The following recurrence relation can be used to generate a sequence of numbers. All right, L0 is 37. So let's write that down. L0 is 37. To get to my next term, I take my current term and, hold on, add C. I don't know what C is. All right, the value of L2 is 25. Oh, L1, L2. So I know what L2 is. The value of C is. So I've added a value of C to get to here. I've added the same value there. Oh, so I've just got to find out what that is. Well, I know to get from 37 to 25, I am subtracting 12. Well, if the total between there and there is 12, and I've got to do it twice, and I'm going to halve it to give me minus 6. So in which case, C must equal minus 6. A, I believe, was our correct answer. And there we go, that's the end of this particular video. Hopefully it has been helpful. Uh, there are other videos in the series and I look forward to seeing you in those. Please take care of yourself, stay safe, and don't forget to subscribe to YouTube if you can. Anyway, so too needy. Take care guys, bye bye.